Hey everybody and welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host Elias Roush. Today we have Money Heist, La Casa de Papel, the Netflix original part one season, well sorry, part one episode three. Sorry, there's so many of these stupid title things that get all up in the way. Y'all. <laughs> Couldn't do seasons, they had to do parts. So part one, episode three. So, uh, we're going to do a little, quick little scene by scene uh, today. So, the first scene really was uh, really was a game changer. The professor decided to release what his face looked like to the professor. Uh, sorry, to uh, the inspector. He borrowed, uh, sorry, she borrowed the phone from the professor. And um, basically, he does like a creepy little turnaround and knows exactly that you know, her phone's going to be dying at this specific time because the professor knows everything. Um, sure, okay, sir. So it almost feels like he's trying to clown, clown the, uh, the uh, cops and the, the officials. He wants to be on all sides of this investigation, just like every other crazy person that's in the crime. They want to know all sides. Once they kill the person, they want to go back to the murder. They want to go back to the place. They want to mess with the insides. So basically, we, we learned that it's 20 hours into the heist, 8 million euros are being printed an hour, and it's a total of 52 million euros printed so far. Um, I was curious, couldn't the bills be tracked? Um, I wasn't really sure, like, you can just start printing off money from, you know, the men, and all of a sudden, you know, you can just run off with it, and it's all good. Like, I thought that all bills were tracked heavily, and they, uh, they all had a specific serial code number and they could be destroyed or, you know, not accepted in some places if it, if they were found to be false. So, um, we get the, the thesis or the theme for this episode was, um, love is a good reason for everything to fall apart. And I was curious, who's going to get jealous? Who's going to, who's going to get taken down? What's the, what's the go-to? What's, you know, what's going to happen? Um, I also noticed that occasionally some of the dialogue, I probably already mentioned this, the dialogue in the, uh, in the titles of what they're saying does not match up with, uh, the captions. And it, um, sometimes they just leave out complete sentences or something like that and it's like they just said fuck it so it's almost like if you don't watch both if you don't listen to what they're saying and watch the captions you could easily be uh left in the dust on a couple couple things um and occasionally they would say you know they, it sounded like they were going to clean up that clean up some of the captioning because the captioning might say like jerk or jerk instead of bastard but then it would say like uh fuck instead of uh screw or something like that on the opposite end of the spectrum so it it didn't really seem like they were trying to clean up the audio too much on the uh on the captions as well so it's not like they were just having clean clean captions and dirty audio or dirty dirty captions and clean audio it really is a dispersed dis, dispersed uh mix um so anyway continuing on the douche guy has uh what why do i never remember douche guy's name i don't i'm going to have to find douche guy's name douche guy has a hostage explain the situation um And I thought that this was so stupid that the sniper was even considering taking a shot. Um, Why the hell would he, why would would he think he can take a shot when they don't have the upper hand at all? And shooting one of the robbers was not going to solve anything. So I was like, hell no dipshit. They're not going (laughs) to, they're not going to shoot. So yeah. Um, Following into the next scene, I thought it was a really cool uh, camera shot with uh, Inspector Morrell. Morrell. I don't know. We're we're gonna call him Morel. Um, her Morel. When she was entering her room, her daughter's room, the camera kind of pulls out and does a rotation shift, and also changes perspectives in the shallow shallow depth of field to uh, a wider depth of field, and it uh, it pulls back to see her daughter, and it's a really cool shot, and just the way it's. Uh, framed and 
Um, yeah, in the, in the way it's shown. Really cool. Uh, it, I think this implies that since that the daughter seems to be with her grandmother a lot, she probably doesn't get to see her daughter a lot. Um, so it's nice to see that she has like a little nice touchstone. She wants to go see her daughter. Um, douche guy goes to his daily ritual of antagonizing the banker who's named Altro. Um, and I think the guy that plays Altro uh, is a great actor. He's he's always like getting shit on him. Uh, this is the third episode, and I think every episode he's had some sort of episode, uh, some sort of mental breakdown he's had to go through. Um, just the amount of stress this guy is <laughs> probably being put under is probably tremendous. Just in this one uh, this one scenario, and so uh, I think he's doing a great a great job. So following along the the robbers want to become more accommodating they want to accommodate some of these uh hostages and so they just uh, decide okay we can we'll medicate some of the hostages we'll you know get you any uh day after pills uh plan b's uh who needs to delete some nudes offline you know oh you do okay we'll help you out there i mean they're helping everybody out i mean they, i'm i i thought the nudes uh the nudes were a ridiculous reason to get on the uh to get on a phone to to contact your parents. I thought that that was kind of a weak um a weak thread. I I can't find what her name is. Um hmm. no, don't see. Definitely don't see her. Sorry. Well, we're just going to keep on calling her the high school girl with the nudes. Um <laughs> cuz she um I, I guess she doesn't have that big of a filmography in the, on IMDb. I can't find her. I don't know. Um, if anyone has her, just send her in uh, the Lucky Dog Podcast at gmail dot com or add us at Lucky Dog Podcast on Twitter. Um, yeah, I really don't see her. So sorry. Um, yeah, she says I need to contact my folks so they can go delete a photo off of online and i'm pretty sure she's topless or something like that with a dude um in the bathroom and it probably didn't even turn out that great to, for one thing like i'm pretty sure that guy could get sued or something like that something it, something could definitely happen um but i thought that was such a dumbass request to to the hostages you know hey we're in a hostage situation but uh can i go delete some uh, dudes <laughs> and well um yeah, I don't know. It was a ridiculous uh, subplot. Um, so then we got some of the robbers. They decide uh, making the guys hostage, the hostages drill and jackhammer. And um, I couldn't exactly tell what they were doing down there. Maybe making an escape route, according to Autro Aud later. Um, but there's also, skipping a little bit ahead, heroin with explosives either attached to them or in them or something drugs and explosives they're they're at the bottom of the the cellar of the mint and so there's some sort of big master plan going on down there so we could definitely got to keep our eyes and ears open to that um i really don't have anything big um may like ideas or predictions for that maybe the maybe they explode a tunnel so they could get through or something like that. That would be my guess. I don't know. Um, so anyway, we, we uh, hop on over to what's her face telling her folks about the, the topless photo. And I just thought that was all ridiculous. And then Tokyo walks in, makes a couple smart remarks to Rio because Rio's kind of, mm, you know, he's kind of, He's giving uh, the eye, eyes at the uh, the one the one chick that has the photo problems. Um, <laughs> he you know he's always trying to make her feel a little bit better, and then Tokyo definitely just feels um, she's jealous. She's just straight up jealous. And so while they're je uh, while they're having an argument, um, Rio and Tokyo are you know, arguing. She um, she's going in. Rio's phone and kind of going through like uh, contacting the, the the police in some sort of um, 
I think she's sending like a live feed or something like that. And the terminology that is being used with this old man is just so ridiculous. He's like, hack it, enhance it, and, and enhance, you know, uh, look in, uh, research. And he's just using these big terminology, uh, computer terms that are very generic for almost anyone. Um, I guess they just, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of, uh, what is it called? The Born Old, not... One of the more more recent Bourne movies with uh, Matt Damon, they they just have very uh, easy terminology when it comes to some of the tech, so that it can be applied to almost any situation. Um, but I, I thought that it was a stupid ass picture of uh, Rio. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, this hops on over to when Otro and Pablo find. Um, find the stuff, um, and find the stuff in the cellar, and then Inspector Morello's, um, being pressured to be taken, being pressured to go hop back into the hostage situation. For some reason, she feels that after that hostage negotiation tactic that went a few hours earlier, she's just like, fuck it, I'm going home, I'm not doing this, I'm not dealing with it, and then all it took was one phone call from, I guess, one boss that said she's the best that could do it without the least number of casualties. That means she can come through and give them the bee's knees and give them the work. Like, I'm not even sure that that would be possible for an inspector just to say, fuck it, I'm done, and then come back all in one session. It just, it, if you're really the best, why would she even leave in the first place? So, I'm not sure if that's a pacing thing. I'm not sure if that's a writing thing. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I would agree with that, though. Um... But, uh, anyways, it brings Morello back, and on the way there, like, one of the reporters asked her about a domestic dispute with the, uh, with something that her boss had brought up previously, just very momentarily, uh, in, like, an episode before. Like, why is that even being brought up? There's a bank heist, and you're asking the, the cop about some domestic, uh, disputes? Um, I don't know, is that... It it seemed like I guess maybe good coverage, but um, is that what people are looking for when they're on the news? Is the personal lives of the <laughs> of the news reporters? Uh, I mean, of the the cops and the news reporters? I don't I, I don't know. It was a little weird. Um, I just thought they'd be focused on the robbery. Um, so a call between the inspector and uh, Inspector Morello and Professor. Um, it was cool how they were getting ready for it. It was very uh, cinematic how they... Uh, I always say cinematic, but I mean, it was you know, slow-mo. They had nice music kind of coming in, and nice fades. and um, For some reason, the place that Inspector... Inspector, the professor... Inspector, professor, direct, doctor, director... I mean, there's... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's so many names and titles. Um, the place where the professor was uh, calling from, wherever he is, it's like a wet cellar. Why is it so damn wet? Why is it so damn wet and slimy? I don't know. I feel like this guy should be working in a, a nice ass uh, office or somewhere uh, corporate or something. But I don't know. He just seems like he's working underground, and he seems not to be that kind of guy. So I I still want to know a little bit more behind the professor because he kind of just acts so suave, and we don't know too much about him. So, anyways. This was a really uh, interesting, um, I don't know, a line, couple of lines of dialogue that go between each other. They talk about faking an orgasm and how it compares to a lie. Um, and it, it it's a long way to get to a short, short scenario situation. Just it explaining what the hell's going on and essentially it leads up to inspector morello running shit she's she she's like this is how it's going to go down this is how it's going to be your shit's going to be plastered everywhere that we're running shit and it really looks like uh, the inspector is in charge and we haven't really seen the professor put down into this uh perspective i guess yet um because i guess he is really trying to get a feel for who he's working with um Pablo and Altro begin freaking out about the 
phone in Altra's jacket in his office, and so that kind of plants the seed of where the phone is. That'll soon be found a little bit later. Um, douche guy wants to ex uh, execute a hostage as an example. So the professor and douche guy definitely have a conversation that says, no, it's not okay to execute a hostage. But yet, do we have an ex uh, executed hostage at the, end, at the end of this? We shall find out momentarily in a little bit, in a wee bit. <laughs> um, Otto, uh, Otto, Ultra tries to tell Monica that he wants to have, that he wants them to have their baby. He's kind of flip-flopped over because of everything that he said. I'm pretty sure in the first episode we found out he was married, but I wasn't 100% sure, and that's kind of what the whole deal was with the abortion going down. But, um, Ultra is basically saying, you know, we got a we got a phone. We get, we can call the police. We can go do all this. You just got to go to the office and do all that. And um, so, uh, as soon as he's explaining all of this, douche guy comes in and he's like, "All right, who's trying to be a hero? Who's trying to go call the cops? Who's trying to get a phone? That, that kind of thing." And Ultra is just sweating a nut. You're like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he's like, not me. And uh, it's definitely him. I mean, basically, he he just stares him down the entire time. It's it's almost like a ritual just to to make Ultra shit his pants once an episode. Um, <laughs> uh, and we know next episode that'll be happening again. Um, so they begin making some of the hostages strip, and then uh, it's. Uh, Rio comes up out of nowhere and says, hold on, we got I got to tell you something, you know, I, I got to explain the situation. And so this leads to Rio getting a real ass whooping and a weird discussion about douche guy's fantasy with uh, the his teacher that was a little bit older than him and he had fantasies with her or something like that. I don't know, but... Uh, douche guy has some weird fantasies with like older women and just women in general. He just definitely, he just looks at them differently and he like hates women, but he, he neglects they when they neglect him and then it just something about is it misogyny or something like that. I can't exactly put my thumb on what this guy's problem is, but he's definitely got something against women. Um, and then other people on another level too. Um, so yeah, he fucks up Rio. Um, he basically explains how it all went down. Or sorry, Rio. Rio gets his ass whooped, um, and then it flashes over to the hostages um, get receiving the medical goods. And um, I liked just the small adjustments. How since they're hostages holding guns or something, I think they're hostages holding guns. One of them has the guns kind of pointed up a little bit too high, so one, the robber points it down, and just small adjustments like that kind of make the show a little feel a little bit more realistic than uh, the the average show. Like, I mean, I would, if I was directing this, I I probably wouldn't even think to have something as small as that. You know, like oh, since you're not since you're not used to holding a gun, you shouldn't be you shouldn't hold it right, and might have just a s slight hand tap just to adjust it, and it's just such a small detail um that that's that really works and it really thrives and it shows that they are looking for something um looking for some real detail in their show and i like that um monica looks all sorts of sketchy when she's in the women's room and decides to scoop the phone um i don't know if this was believable she she looked all sorts of just <laughs> She's like sweating so hard. I don't understand. I guess there's no air conditioning or something. Um, and then uh, Denver decides he wants to tell her about anti-abortion because of what he's been through. And I really don't want to talk about you know wh whether you should or shouldn't have uh, abortions because that's it's entirely a different uh, podcast and a different subject. But I was really taken off guard by how uh, how strong. Um, this guy felt about anti-abortion and I was not expecting that for this type of show, television show. Um, so uh, right before uh, anything else, we flash back to 
the breakfast when um, the inspector Morello and the professor were there and we didn't know the outcome of that breakfast and she she holds him down and searches him searches his shit after she gets some real information and she thinks that he he's a recorder trying to catch some information and to an extent she's right he is uh trying to get information but not in the same way she's thinking and so i was a little bit taken back from this was this a flashback i i'm i'm, I'm pretty sure this was a flashback so because uh morello uh definitely sorry not morello the professor says that you know you you addressed me at the diner or something like that and so i thought that meant that they would have known what the that the professor was part of the team when they were on the phone call with inspector and the professor i i could have sworn the professor gave his his uh background his gave his uh, identity up so um this flashes over um to denver and monica having an anti-abortion talk and Denver had his his mom was essentially a, a drug addict and she ended up spending her last few bucks on drugs instead of an anti-abortion pill and he was he became Denver and so he's a big advocate for anti-abortion just because his mom uh, couldn't afford to do it um, and I thought this was a really intense scene for, um, for one, the show, because I didn't think the show was going to lean into this uh, territory. Um, but it, it, this guy is extremely intrusive, and he doesn't even ask. I mean, he gives straight up two to three scenarios of, of things that parent, parents can't do or something because they got kids or something like that. And he goes through, like, um, very specific scenarios that I was just surprised that he was going to bring up. And he was like, oh, you can't go to the movies because you got kids? Well, is that the worst thing? And it's like, you're in a robbery, lady. Like, this is a, some of the worst things in your life. And I guess on the spectrum of things, yeah, your life being threatened is is probably much worse than, you know, having to change a couple diapers. But this guy seems to have he, he just he wants all of his um all of his perspective to be absorbed in whole by this lady that he barely knows by monica like this guy needs to back up denver needs to needs to chill with re regardless of what side you're on he, he he gives her the guilt trip around but he gives her money she walks away, and as soon as she's uh, walked away, Dusha pulls up. She walks right by him, and that dinger goes right off. So it's shing, and Dusha almost looks pleased to have found the individual that had gotten this, uh, that had gotten the cell phone, and he's like pleasantly just starts unzipping her. Um, robbery outfit and goes in under her shirt to grab clothes and uh not clothes uh cash uh, loads of cash and it was just cash cash that denver had just given her and this looked really bad in uh in uh the douche guy's eyes and especially she's just sob sobbing and then he gets the phone and it it was like it was just really bad it was hard to watch um it was extremely intrusive. And he says, kill her. He tells Denver to kill her and make it fast. And the way it was going on, it, it kind of elongated a little bit, but um, it really teetered on whether it was going to do it or not. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I was surprised that it went as far as it did, um, but I don't think they're going to kill her. Um, I really liked how they, he, he picked her up and he said, you know, uh, he's, you're coming with me kind of thing. And the editing into it was really intense. I was like, oh, fuck. 
um, it's like ch -ch 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 with these black flashes um, black screens um, coming up into the next scene and uh, I was like damn but I really I don't think we have not seen a body and she's taken in the bathroom and we still have not seen a body so we got to keep that in mind um, Tokyo sees Rio is hurt and begins taking out cameras um, she she's going rogue she be she goes rogue um, she goes all around the the men taking out cameras and then all of a sudden the big motherfuckers show up at the main office and um, everywhere it's a big standoff um, at this point it's editing in between Monica and Denver and uh, Tokyo and douche guy and professor um, <clears throat> I thought the editing was really well. It kept, keeps the pace up. Really, this pacing in the last three episodes have been really good. Um, I haven't been binging this show terribly fast because I'm trying to get Kelly on this. So um, we'll see if that happens. No promises. <laughs> but she, I'm sure she's going to have some big things to say about it if she does. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really like the editing in between this. I, I don't think Denver's going to kill Monica. I don't think he can kill a pregnant lady. Given his stance on anti-abortion how strong it is, I don't think he's going to kill a baby and a mother. It just is a double whammy. Um, the professor explains how Rio and Tokyo are all over the news, and the, their identities have been given up, basically, and it's like, eh, it's not looking so good. At, at one point, I thought there was a... We could literally lose Rio and Tokyo, but since we're getting a narration from Tokyo, I'm not even sure if that's possible if we could lose her. So that that's something we have to keep in mind. Um, so we did see the gun go off in Denver's hands, and it was a pretty intense scene by the way it was going, but based, based on it, I don't know if that means that there's a body. We did not see Monica laying there with a bullet in her, and I've seen so many different types of... Uh, media where I thought that someone was dead I've even seen people that were basically dead and they just bring them right back uh, right before your eyes um, so you uh, you I, I always say if you didn't see the body they're probably not dead so you really gotta you really gotta check it um, but yeah so thank you for joining me um, thank you for listening to the lucky dog podcast we're lucky to have you and rate share subscribe five stars let us know we're doing okay let us know we're doing not so great let us know something just give us some update let us know you're out there out there out there <laughs> um check out our other podcasts we have uh, movies tv uh podcast anime cartoons uh, television shows um and we take recommendations, comments, concerns, anything else. Uh, let us know at the Lucky Dog Podcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening and take it easy.